Good morning, Faith Baptist Church family. Thank you so much for joining us here online yet again. I encourage you, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, and um, we're going we're gonna to look here, kind of the writer of Ecclesiastes, Solomon is going to um, uh, look at how we are to worship God and, and what should be our, our spirit and our attitude in our, our worship as we come into the presence of God. And uh, if you have your Bible, turn with me to, like I said, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I trust you're having a, a good beginning to your week. I hope you have a, uh, a great week this week and uh, hope you're enjoying the summer. Uh, we have uh, warm weather here in Fresno, but uh, perhaps you're staying cool and I encourage you to do so. Um, Ecclesiastes 5 and verse number 1. Uh, it's a little shorter passage of scripture today. I'm going to go ahead and read it in its entirety, and then we'll go ahead and walk through uh, verse by verse like we have been through uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. Scripture says this, uh, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and of a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools." Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow, than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel, this, that it was in error. Uh, wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there also is diverse vanities, but fear thou God. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll jump in today. Lord Jesus, as we look into this passage of scripture and we see it in light of the New Testament invitation that we worship God, that we worship you in spirit and in truth, uh, not in temples built with hands, but as we come into your presence, may we have a spirit of reverence and fear. And I ask this in Jesus name. Amen. He begins this portion of scripture talking about the necessity to guard or watch our steps as we enter into the presence of God. Now, we know in the Old Testament, God's presence resided in temples and tabernacles, in places of, 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 of buildings and, 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 and uh, physical locations. We know that as a, in Christ, we have the opportunity to come before the throne of God anywhere and everywhere uh, that we are. Uh, we are not confined by uh, four walls. Uh, we are able to worship the Lord uh, uh, wherever we are in this world. However, there is a biblical truth that I think transcends through the Old Testament into the New Testament is how we approach God or how we come to God as we gather together and we worship him. And even in our own personal, uh, private, quiet times. Um, he talks about this idea of coming before God in a spirit of reverence and fear and not coming to him flippantly full of our own words. Um, you almost get the idea of someone just nonstop talking um, in God's presence, not acknowledging who he is, the creator of all of, of, all of the universe, the uh, covenant one uh, who loves us and cares for us. And uh, the, he says the fool just kind of runs their mouth and never stops uh, talking and never uh, stands in awe of God. And he says this, he says, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Now, this is a fascinating verse, and, and there's a lot of uh, maybe, um, uh, you know, debate on the exact meaning of what it means to be a sacrifice of fools. But if you look at the, is the wisdom literature, uh, fools are known by, if you're reading context, fools are known by um, not being able to stop talking. Matter of fact, Proverbs kind of alludes to the fact that um, a fool will open up his mouth and uh, you will, a fool that doesn't have his, you know, keeps his words, uh, that people may not know that he's a fool, but if he just opens up his mouth, he's going to be uh, uh, targeted. He's going to be known 
hey, this person is a foolish person, okay? Uh, the idea of running their mouths, never stop talking, uh, the excess of words, okay? And so he says, it is better for you to come into the presence of God in a spirit of reverence, a spirit of, of awe, and there's this idea of silence. Now, it's interesting. I remember um, there's kind of two extremes on this. Um, we, uh, I remember in college, there was um, at the college that I went to, when we would go into chapel or we would go into the church services um, there, uh, there was this, there was this um, uh, kind of this rule. I don't know if it was like an uh, unspoken rule. It was just a, that you would be remain silent as you were walking into the church. Now, I don't believe that is the correct response completely, but I think they were getting at something. They were getting at the, the fact that, hey, this should be a time where we, we come in and we, we're in a spirit of worship. We're in a spirit of awe. We, we are here to hear from God, not tell God what he needs to do. He says, be ready to listen. Uh, That alludes right into uh, the James passage. Let us be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. We should be more ready to listen than we are to uh, utter our mouths. He says, don't be rash with your mouth and and don't let your heart be hasty to utter anything before God. And uh, he talks about this, the dreams come through the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Uh, he's going to use this allusion to these, uh, uh, the fact that these, uh, we sometimes the daydreams, they lead to vanity and, and dreams and all this stuff is, there's just an excess of this uh, and all these words, they just lead to vanity. He says, no, I want you, when you come to God, I want you to have a spirit of reverence and fear and awe and worship of God um, that we abs- ascribe to him worth and value. I have to ask you, like last time you came and gathered together and, and you're in the presence of God. God through maybe your own private prayer time or perhaps as you gather together in our church. And I, I want to extend a welcome to everybody to come and gather with us at Faith Baptist Church if you're available and free uh, here. I know that many of you folks are uh, traveling during the summertime and everything, but there's something special and something um, spiritual about gathering together uh, corporately to worship our, our Savior. And when we do, when we come and gather, is it is it just is it, is it like, hey, we're going to come down to a social club and seeing all of our friends or is is it, hey, I'm going to hear from God today. Uh, I feel convicted about this because, um, you know, oftentimes we come to church and, and we go to church so often and perhaps it, it, we forget the fact that we are coming here to worship and proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and lifting up God uh, through the messages and through the preaching and through the, the singing and through the, the prayer. All of it's to, to tune our hearts to worship God. And he says, when you come, don't come with this multitude of words, just be, be still, be quiet, and listen to what God has for us. And he talks about these oaths or these vows that we make to God. He says, when you vow a vow unto God, do not defer to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou owest, or which thou vowed. Uh, better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Okay, so he says this. He says he says when you make a vow to God, if you if you say God, I I I vow, I promise this. I'm going to make a covenant with you, God. I'm I vow this vow. Uh, don't defer to pay it or to come uh, to completion. Uh, this is oftentimes seen in the Old Testament. If you remember Hannah, uh, who was barren and, and desperately wanted a son, and she prayed and prayed, and she prayed for a son, and she, she vowed a vow. She said, Lord, if you will give me a son, I will lend him to you. I will give him to you for uh, the rest of his life. And, and, uh, and she, she fulfilled that, that vow. Um, you know, as we, as in, in the church, you think, well, we don't really make those kind of covenant vows as we promise to God something. But in reality, all of us do. Um, uh, if you are, if you were, if you were married uh, in the church and you uh, made a covenant vow, I remember uh, getting married uh, 13 years ago uh, to my beautiful wife, and and we made a vow uh, to death do us part uh, for for rich or for poor that we would we have a, we made a covenant with one another that we would uh, love each other and provide for each other and care for each other. Uh, for the rest of our lives. And we made that covenant, not just with our friends and our family, we made that covenant before God. And uh, that's, a, uh, that's, an important, that's an important vow. And uh, every time I, I look at this ring, it's a reminder of that vow that I made to my wife and to God. 
uh, as a covenant with her. Uh, we uh, here at Faith Baptist Church, we have our ba baby dedication services. That's, a, that's an opportunity for uh, parents to, to bring their, their newborn children or their young children, and they make a vow that they're going to raise that child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, that we're going to raise them up in Christ, that, that we would raise them to, to love and to serve Jesus all of their lives. And, and that's a vow. That's something that we, we take seriously. And he says, I, I, you know, it is important when you make a promise, when you, when, you, when you tell God something, you need to be, hold that your word. Jesus, in the New Testament, he says, hey, don't, don't swear by this and don't swear by that. No, he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be a man or a woman of your word. If you commit to something, do it. Follow through. Uh, he says, it's better if you don't make a vow than to vow and go back on it. Uh, so it, there's a seriousness. You see this seriousness, this reverence, this awe when we come before the presence of God. So I, I believe sometimes, and, and I think I'm as, as guilty as many of us, we, we, come to, we come to a knowledge of God and we come before God and we sometimes forget that uh, we are speaking to the almighty God, creator of the universe. And uh, we have this kind of flippant attitude. He says, don't let your uh, mouth, uh, don't cause your flesh to sin, neither say thou uh, before the angel that it was an heir, wherefore should God be angry at your voice? And he says, in the multitudes of dreams and words, there's diverse vanities, but fear thou God. What is he saying here? He's saying, when you make a mistake, when you, when you uh, perhaps don't follow through on your vow or your commitment, um, don't compound the problem by lying to God and to those that come to you. So you got the idea of a priest would come and, or something, uh, some, some leadership would come and, and talk about this vow. And he says, don't allow your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Don't, don't, don't take it further. Uh, in that moment, in that moment, if we make a mistake, if we make a commitment to God and we've gone back on that commitment, uh, don't add insult to injury by, um, by lying before God and lying before our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. No, he says, just confess that, confess it, forsake it, as we see in the New Testament. And what is the last, what is the last um, admonition in this passage is fear thou God. Um, Christian, you know, I, I implore you, I, I press on you uh, this, um, this challenge that as we approach God today, as we approach him in our worship, and as we approach him in our, 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 our church congregation, as you come before the Lord, may it not be a flippant attitude of, hey, it's just like hanging out with my friends. No, we are coming before the presence of Almighty God. And may that bring in us a spirit of worship, awe, and reverence. And uh, perhaps say a little less and worship just a little bit more. Let's, uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, we love you. I thank you, Father, for the admonition that we see here in Scripture to, to worship you in spirit and truth, but that we come before you in a spirit of awe and reverence. Lord, we love you. I pray that, God, you would be honored and glorified through our worship. May we not have a flippant attitude when we come before you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.